dear friends. We are half an hour late today. Sorry. <laughs> How are you all? You're all preparing for different exams. And we are here today with practice for Andhra Pradesh set. Ankita, are you ready? Yes. Let us share the screen. Huh. AP set crash course, day four, paper two. Yes. Right? Tomorrow is paper paper one. You should attend tomorrow's class also. Okay, Ankita. Huh. Which of the following is accepted tenet? Is the accepted tenet of new criticism? New criticism focuses on which of the following? The literary text has a distinctive and ontological status. Is that true? The literary text has a distinctive ontological status. The intention of the author is relevant to the analysis of the text. That is wrong. Intentional fallacy says that intention of the author is not relevant. Now, the context of the text is important. Is that right? No, in new criticism, context is not important. Only the text you should have isolated reading of the text, isn't it? The response of the reader is part of the textual interpretation. Is that right? No. Affective fallacy says that it is wrong to look at the response of the reader. So I think the answer is A. The literary <laughs> text has a distinctive ontological status. Ontology means being the literary text is being it is there you should not study about the text you should study the text itself ontological criticism is there propounded by jc ransom isn't it ankita did i say the right thing yes yes okay okay so you want to add something to new criticism Okay, so new criticism was an Anglo-American movement which started roughly from the 1920s and it was very popular in the American uni uh, universities at the beginning of the early 20th century. And this term, new criticism, was popularized by J.C. Ransom through his work, through his text, The New Criticism. So it's a very important school of thought and please be very careful about which school of thought emerged at which time. So such questions are coming a lot in many set exams. So be very careful about the times or span also. Okay. Next the question. New critics, the new critics are contemporary to Chicago school critics or neo-Aristotelians. The new critics are formalists. Hmm. Before the American new critics, there were a group of Cambridge critics, they were called practical critics. They are I.A. Richards, William Emson, and F.R. Leavis. Okay. <clears throat> Name the philosopher who attempted to fuse structuralism and Marxism. Structuralism and Marxism. Is it Roland Barthes? Is it Antonio Gramsci? Is it Louis Althusser? Is it Terry Eagleton? This man started what is called structural Marxism. Ankita, tell us who it is. Okay. So here the philosopher who tried to fuse structuralism with Marxism, he is Louis Althusser. Louis Althusser was a French Marxist philosopher and he was also a professor of philosophy. All of his works are very important, especially his uh, works in ideology. They're very important. And uh, Althusser talked about ideology. He talked about ideological state apparatuses and repressive state apparatuses. I-S-A, R-S-A. Okay, please read more about it. I recently taught... Uh, Althusser very much in detail in our uh, six-month course. Okay, next question. And yes, he famously I... described himself as a social anarchist. 
so you can get a question like who among the following described himself or thought himself to be a social anarchist so that's an important point he thought himself to be a, to be a social anarchist okay uh, he went against the base superstructure binary opposition of karl marx and he also talked about how ideology subjects subjugates you uh, that term is interpolation okay Choose the wrongly matched pair. Hercule Poirot. It's a detective. Is it? Is he created by Agatha Christie? Oh my God! In my college days and school days, I have read so many Agatha Christie novels. Hercule Poirot is a character created by Agatha Christie. Sherlock Holmes, Arthur Conan Doyle. All of you know that one. Adam Dalgleish. Is it Edgar Edgar Allan Poe? Philip Marlowe. Is it Raymond Chandler? Both of them are American detective writers. Ankita, you have to tell us who made Adam Dalglish and who yes. created Philip Marlowe. So here the uh, wrong option is option C, Adam Dalglish. So he's not a character created by Edgar Allan Poe. Rather, he's a character created by P.D. James. So Adam Dalglish is a fictional character who is the protagonist of 14 mystery novels by P.D. James. And the first novel where we get to see this detective character is this novel we see here that is Cover Her Face by P.D. James. And we see this detective in 14 mystery novels. So please be very careful. Like Ed Edgar Allan Poe created the character of August C. Dupin and Adam Dalgliesh was created by P.D. James. That is good. P.D. James is a woman, okay. Right. Next question. Huh. Edward Said's reading of Jane Austen's Mansfield Park that demonstrates deep implications of imperialism is an example for Dash. You all know that he did this reading in Culture and Imperialism. What does it show? What kind of reading? Is it decolonial reading, allegorical reading, nativistic reading or contrapuntal reading. I will give you a clue. It is a reading that shows the elements of both colonizer and colonizers. Both are there. It is, I'm giving you a clue. It is contrapuntal reading. Edward Said, would you like to add some more information, Ankita? Okay, so in this context, I would like to tell you that literary terms they're very important. So uh, when you are reading theory and also when you're reading terms, you come across certain terms like contrapuntal reading or other important terms of criticism and theory. So please be very careful about the literary terms. Who was associated with which term? Like here, contrapuntal reading, it was put forward by Edward Said. So such terms, who was associated and in which work was it talked about? These factors are very important. So please be very careful when you're reading these things. Very good. Now, Edward Say, the Palestinian critic, he has written Orientalism and its sequel, Culture and Imperialism. He wrote about beginnings of author's works. He also wrote a book on late style. He was also a musician. You should know about the theorists in detail, their major works. Okay, Ankita, next question. Hmm. The Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein is about, have you heard of this one? This is the problem in net. They will suddenly ask about books that you don't know anything about. Maybe. The Struggle of Feminism Against Religions. Is it about the evils of modern medicine? Is it about neoliberalism? Is it about attacks on African-American women? The Shock Doctrine. The shock doctrine. Is it the struggle of feminism against religions? Or is it evils of modern medicine? Which of these is the answer, Ankita? Okay. So the shock doctrine, it's a work by Naomi Klein, which talks about neoliberalism. And its full title is The Shock Doctrine, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism. This work is very famous and Naomi Klein is a Canadian author and she's a social activist. 
and in this work she argues that neo liberal free, uh, free market policies have risen to prominence in countries and regions such as us uk china and europe because of a deliberate strategy of shock therapy so here she talks about a, a detailed politics of neo liberalism neo liberal free market in advanced countries so this is the topic and another very famous work by naomi klein is no logo that's a very important work by naomi klein okay so we have got to know about a very important contemporary writer of uh, prose and cultural criticism thank you ankita next question <clears throat> Richardson's Clarissa falls under the category of dash. Is it epistolary novel, psychological novel, realistic novel, Bildungsroman? All the novels of Richardson were epistolary novels. So is that the answer? Yes. Epistolary, psychological? Talk about it, Angita. Huh. So firstly, the full titles, very important. So Clarissa on the history of a young lady. It's an epistolary novel by English writer Samuel Richardson. It was published in 1748. And this novel tells the tragic story of a young woman, Clarissa Harlow, whose quest for virtue is continually thwarted by her family. So virtue, chastity, all these are very important elements of 18th century fiction, like we also see in Pamela. There she is constantly trying to, you know, protect her chastity from her master Squire B. So uh, that's also an epistolary novel. And it's also an epistolary novel published in 1748 by Richardson. Very good. Thank you for that. That is interesting. Next question, please. Hmm. Betty Frieden. She is a very important feminist. She inaugurated second wave of feminism with a book. Which is that? Is it the second sex? The feminine mystique? A room of one's own? Or thinking about women? Betty Frieden met her classmates and found that none of them actually enjoy doing their household chores. And she wrote this book about it published in 1964 or something. Ankita, what is the answer? Is it thinking about women or the feminine mystique? Yes. So here the answer is Betty Frieden wrote the feminine mystique. And as ma'am said, it sparked the second wave of feminism in the US. It was published on February 19, 1963. And this book is about what? This book is about fulfillment. So she challenged the widely shared belief that fulfillment as a woman had only one definition for American women after 1949, the housewife and mother. So she shattered this idea that only the four walls of a house, the only the household chores, only the duties of a mother cannot be the only sources of pleasure for a woman. So. Till then, this illusion was protected that a woman is supposed to find fulfillment in her motherhood duties, in her duties of being a wife, a daughter. So this book shatters that illusion, shatters the stereotypical idea, and she challenges this fact, and she brings forth new avenues of pleasure for women, like how this definition of pleasure has multiple meanings at multiple levels for a woman. Wonderful. The Second Sex is by Simone de Boa. A Room of One Zone is by Virginia Woolf. Thinking About Women is by Mary Elman. Okay, thank you. Next one. Leopold Sedar Senghor, Amy Sasser. They are associated with Dash. Is it Harlem Renaissance, Back to Africa, Negritude or Surrealism? It is a movement which took pride in... Uh, African-ness, blackness, which is that movement? Okay. Is it... So this movement is Negritude. Negritude is a movement by Francophone intellectuals from Africa. They spoke French. And uh, they had a, an anthology called Black Orpheus. 
which was very important. Okay, next please. Huh. JM Singh's Riders to the Sea is a dash. Is it a one act play, two act play, three act play, four act play, five act play, six act play? No, no, no. <laughs> Since you ask this question, Ankita, I think it is a one act play. Huh. It is a one act play by JM Singh. <laughs> Very good. Riders <laughs> to the Sea. Mo Mo Moira is uh, losing all her son's husband, everybody to the sea. Uh, and she it is ending without any melodrama. Right. Next, please. Oh. James is an Irish writer. Have you joined our TN, TRB Assistant Professor English exam course? It is going really, really well. We have amazing uh, lectures and op uh, materials, PDF, quizzes, and very importantly, coaching for descriptive exam. If any of you is preparing for this exam or any descriptive exam, this course will help you actually. And more importantly, uh, there is also a PYQ course, PYQ explanations course. It has never been explained so well by anybody else. We are guaranteeing this. Excellent explanations in the form of answers. And uh, if you take that course, right now there is a discount sale that will also help you in descriptive exam. Okay. If you want, you can contact our office. 938-78-39871. Okay, Ankita, next question. Hi. A short view of the immorality and profaneness of the English stage is a fierce attack on restoration drama. Congreve and Van Bro were attacked. <clears throat> Who is the author? Would you like to read out the options, Ankita, and explain Hi. the end? Okay. So it was an anti-theatrical pamphlet which attacked restoration drama and this uh, pamphlet came out in 1698. So who wrote this anti-theatrical pamphlet? Was it Dryden or Charles Lamb or Jeremy Collier or John Denham? So this anti-theatrical pamphlet, a short view of the immorality and profaneness of the English stage, this anti-theatrical pamphlet was written by Jeremy Collier. And this came out in 1698. Van Bra and Congreve, they were attacked. Very good. Next question. Which novel among the following shows the story of the Das family in post-partition India? They are in Delhi, not all of them. One of them is in Delhi, Bimla, and she has with her an autistic brother, uh, Baba. Her one brother, Raja, is in Hyderabad. Another brother, Another sister, Tara, has just come visiting. Which is this novel? Is it Fire on the Mountain, Clear Light of Day, Fasting, Feasting, or In Custody? Ankita? Okay. So this novel is Clear Light of Day by Anita Desai. And it is set in Old Delhi. Shortlisted for Man Booker Prize. Okay, Ankita. Huh. Would you like to read? Huh. Okay. Lenny, a four-year-old Parsi girl, recounts her childhood memories after she is struck by polio in her infancy. In which novel among the following? So in which novel among the following, we see this little girl, Lenny, she's struck by polio. She's a Parsi girl and she talks about her childhood memories. Is it the Crow Eaters, the cr uh, uh, Cracking India, an American Brat, or water. So all of these are works by Bapsi Sidwa. And one of these novels has Lenny. So which work is that? Some of them uh, in YouTube, our YouTube babies are thinking, it's wrong because it is not any of these. It is Ice Candy Man. Ankita, explain. Yes. So initially it was called a Cracking India. And initially, was it called Ice Candy Man? I, I got confused. No, I think in that. America, it was called Cracking India or something. Ha, ha, ha. And then it was later called Ice Candy Man. But the main, you know, the first cover which came out of this work, it was of Cracking India. Cracking India, a novel 
by Bapsi Sidwa. Okay. Okay. So I will uh, 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 talk about this confusion. So Cracking India, originally published as Ice Candy Man, it's a novel by Bapsi Sidwa. So this same novel has two different titles, both Cracking India and Ice Candy Man. Right. Good. Next question. Which statement is not true about the Thani's final solutions? The play centers around a middle class Hindu family during a communal riot. I think that's true. The Gandhi family. Not our iconic Gandhi family. This is Ramanik Gandhi, his wife Aruna Gandhi, uh, their mother uh, Hardika Gandhi. It challenges communalism. True. It shows the problems homosexual relations suffer from in India. That's not true. It promotes religious pluralism in South Asia. Yeah, we have to believe not our, only in our religion, we have to tolerate other religions. That's true. It promotes religious pluralism in South Asia. So I think answer is C. Huh. Option C is wrong because this play does not talk about any homosexual relation. And you know, guys, when I was an MA student, uh, at that time, Mahesh Datani got Sahitya Karme Award for Final Solutions and other plays. We studied about it in our class. And then one day, my, my uh, two friends and me, we went walking in the museum grounds here. We did not know something. Mahesh Datani had come to the museum. He was speaking there. We were so shocked. Wow, we just studied him in school, in college, and uh, now he's here. And we waited. We bought this final solutions and other place from there. And we went up to him and got it autographed. And he write, and he wrote to three lovely ladies. <laughs> it, I still have that copy. <laughs> okay, next question. Which of the following is not an ode written by John Keats? Ode on indolence. It is one of the six great odes, I think. Ode to Autumn, it is by John Keats. Ode to Psyche, he's talking about Psyche. He's saying he will build a palace for her. Ode to the West Wind is definitely by Shelley. Yes. Next question, please read out, Ankita. In the guide, Marco doesn't approve of Rosie's passion for what? Singing, dancing, traveling, or painting. The Guide is a novel by R.K. Narayan. And here we see the character of Rosie. And she's very passionate about something. And her husband, Marco, doesn't support her dancing. But Raju supports her a lot. And she ends up becoming a very famous classical dancer. Nalini. Nalini, mm. yes. Okay, next question. Yeah. Hunger is a poem by, is it Kamla Das, Jayanta Mahapatra, A.K. Ramanujan, or Nisim Esakil? Here, this poem talks about different kinds of hunger. The need of a man for sex, for food, everything. Is it by Jayanta Mahapatra, Ankita? Yes, it is by Jayanta Mahapatra, a very important poem. Where a fisherman tries to, you know, sell off his daughter for a sex trade. So he talks about the child sex trade which goes on in India. It talks about this very serious issue. And also the yeah. sexual hunger of a man. So here hunger is implied at different levels. Not only, you know, physical hunger or the hunger for food but also hunger for, you know, the, the sexual appetite, which every human being goes through. And all of you might know, Jainda Mahabhatra was a professor of physics. Okay, next question. Huh. Which of the following is not a comedy of humors? Sir Janus Volpani, the alchemist, every man out of his humor. One of these is a tragedy. Which of these is a tragedy? Sajanus, his fall. There's another tragedy written by 
Ben Johnson, it is Catalin, his conspiracy. Awesome. <laughs> Next, Sangeeta. <laughs> you can read. Okay. In the Rebati, sorry. In the Rebati, it's a short story. Fakir Mohan champions the cause of what? Is it modern education, medical profession, Oriya speaking people, or making Orisha a separate state? What is this short story talking about? Or what does this short story explore? It's a very famous short story by Fakir Mohan Senapati, the Rebati. It's widely prescribed in all the colleges, especially at bachelor's level. Rebati, is it modern education? Yes. It's a very famous short story. It is considered to be the first ever short story published in Oriya language. It's the first ever short story of Oriya language. The Rebati by Fakir Mohan Senapati. Great. Okay, Ankita, next question. Huh. The Postmaster is a short story by Mahashweta Devi, Rabindranath Tagore, Prem Chand, Ishma Chugutai. I have actually acted in a TV play, a TV, uh, what is it called? Television film, telefilm, uh, based on this short story. The Postmaster by Rabindranath Tagore. I acted as an old woman there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Okay, we have a reminder. Reminder, you can join the TNTRB assistant professor exam quiz, sorry, uh, course that we are running. It has the same syllabus as NET. And here we have so many lectures and quizzes and very, very importantly, uh, a course on writing, how to improve your writing. We have made a, we have already developed long ago an evaluation form, which will really help you. So if you're joining, join now without wasting time. And also, you can also join our previous year questions explanation course, which is amazing, which is the biggest course from 2008 to 2024. And it will be updated. We will add paper one and also set questions. Okay. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Please like the video and share it with your friends. Press the bell icon. And be with us every night at 9 for amazing discussions. Thank you very much from me and...